Now we're ready to look at three rules. Bayes rule, the so-called chain rule of probability, and the partition rule. These are three essential tools to have in your sort of toolbox of, for probability. And let me start by making a remark. So the probability of A intersect B is we can write as the probability of A given B times the probability of B if the probability of B is positive. So this was just essentially the definition of conditional probability. If I divide by the probability of B then I get just the definition. So that's just a simple consequence of the definition of conditional probability. But it's extremely important. That's something you should just reflexively think of when you see this. Think of factoring it in this way. When you see this, think of combining it in this way. And now we're ready for a theorem. Bayes rule. You could hardly call it a theorem, it's so simple, except for the fact that it's so important. So, what does it say? Let's write it this way. The probability of B given A equals the probability of A given B times the probability of B divided by the probability of A if both probabilities are positive. The probability of A is positive and the probability of B is positive. That's Bayes' rule. And this is simple to prove also. So if we take the probability of A here, multiply it over to this side, and then apply our remark, we, can, we get the probability of B intersect A. And on this side, we again apply the remark, and we get the probability of A intersect B. So those are just, so both sides are equal. So this is also just a very simple, almost trivial consequence of the definition of conditional probability. But somehow Bayes' rule expresses some deep sort of, deep sort of meaning of conditional probabilities. In, in particular, it's significant in statistics, particularly important in what's called Bayesian statistics, in which, just to give you a sense of how it's used there, why it's so important, oftentimes you define a probabilistic model in which you have some parameters, and let's say we have some parameters and their values are, the, the, the values that they take are determined by some event B, and the values that the data you observe take are determined by some event A. So when you define a probabilistic model, you often define it in terms of the probability of seeing particular data given some parameter values. And what Bayes' rule allows you to do is to invert those conditional probabilities in some sense. So that if, you're, if you observe some data, then you can infer the probability of your parameter values from the data, given the data. And Bayes' rule just lets you do that. So that's Bayes' rule. And now we're ready for the chain rule. Not the chain rule of calculus, it's the chain rule of probability. So what's the chain rule say? make a little room here. The chain rule says that if I have a bunch of events, A through N, so let's say we have, if we have events A1 through AN, and the probability of A1 intersect all of them up to AN minus 1 is positive, then we have the probability of the intersection of all of them, A1, A2, 
A3, etc., up to An, can be factored in the following way. So we can write the probability of A1 times the probability of A2 given A1 times the probability of A3 given A1 intersect A2 times the probability of A4 given the intersection of A1, A2, and A3, and so on until we get to the probability of A n given everything else. A1 intersect up to A n minus 1. That's the chain rule. And so let's let's prove this. It's so important that I'd like to give you a a full sort of proof here. So the proof is by induction. And we're going to apply our remark above. So you might see this this is sort of a special case of, of this more general thing in the case of n equals 2. And in fact we're going to use that. So, so we'll start out we'll say if n equals 2 then this is satisfied this this property let's say we'll call it star star n so star n holds right because if n is 2 then this just becomes probability of a1 times the probability of a2 given a1 and this is the probability of their intersection and so that's exactly this so now suppose we have some more general n and star n minus 1 holds. Now let b equal the event a1 intersect up to a n minus 1. So then the probability of b by our induction hypothesis, so we suppose that, that this holds for n minus 1, so this probability of b is the probability of this intersection, and so we get this factorization in the case of n minus 1. So this is equal to probability of a1 times probability of a2 given a1, and so on, up to the probability of a n minus 1 given a1 up to a n minus 2. And now, we have, so we want to look at this thing, we want to prove this for n. So we supposed it for n minus 1 and we're going to prove it for n. So the probability, so this probability equals b, probability of b intersect a n, and that equals, now we'll apply our remark here, so this is, this is the, the key induction step So we wanna, we're going to want to get the probability of B, so let's do it this way. So let's do the probability of A n given B times the probability of B. And then this becomes, right, because the probability of B is this thing, so this just becomes all of this stuff here, right? times the probability of an given b and the prob and b is just this event so that's times the probability of an given a1 intersect up to a n minus 1 and that's it that's the right hand side so that's the proof That's what's called the chain rule of probability. Very important, very important rule to remember. Oftentimes you'll see some some big event and people will 
some probability involving a bunch of stuff and then you'll factor it in some way. So let's stop there and then next we'll take a look at the partition rule.